Hey guys, welcome to Skipper Surf Review. This is going to be the second episode for Improve Your Surfing Faster series. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to share my surfing strategy on how I catch waves, where I sit in the lineup, by following the surfing etiquette, which you can find in the description below. As you may know, I surf in Rockaway Beach, New York, which is a beach break where the sandbars, they always shift from swell to swell. We have jetties every 300 feet, which work as a barriers against erosion from currents, tides, and waves. I usually paddle out by the jetty from the inside and let the current take me out to the sea. I think the most important part in surfing is uh, reading the ocean, uh, like how the waves break and form, and once you get the hang of it, you will know where the best spot to catch wave is with just two or three paddles, and I personally uh, try to improve that part, uh, find that best spot to paddle less. And that's me trying to get to the lineup. Uh, I'll probably make another episode for paddling, duck dives, and how to get to the lineup more efficiently. And guys, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, when the lineup is not crowded and there are only four people out there, it's so much easier to manage and take turns. Uh, everyone will get their own share with each set that usually comes with three or sometimes four waves and it all depends on the swell period. For instance, if it's a three foot wind swell at six second period from my experience, you'll get roughly a set every 10 or 15 seconds. At 8 seconds, the lull between sets extends and you may need to wait for uh, 1 or 2 minutes between sets and so on. Again, it all depends on the surf break. And the whole thing gets more complicated when there are over 10 people. What's happening is that uh, there won't be enough waves for everyone with each set and if someone is not following the surfing etiquette, the good vibes can get ruined quickly. When I paddle out at any spot, uh, I always watch and identify the advanced and beginner level surfers. I try to stay away from the beginners to reduce risk of getting injured as they're still learning how to control their board. And uh, so if we took a look, take a look at this particular lineup on a fun three foot East Coast day, it actually has three separate ones with, uh, with their own picks. The main peak has good lifts where the advanced surfers usually sit. Uh, my suggestion for beginner surfers, uh, avoid extra headache with frustration to compete with advanced surfers to catch waves. Just move to the second peak or even the third one and hunt down those dreamers. They're always there. The second peak gets less quality lefts and occasion occasional rights. And the third one gets some random good rights and lefts with less consistency. Since I have a fresh arms and energy to catch bigger waves, I'm paddling to the inside of the main peak. Sitting on the inside comes with the territory. Uh, occasionally I have to pay to play. Uh, when I misjudge the set, I ended up getting the whole set on the head and it's not pleasant at all. I personally prefer to take smaller waves that nobody wants or is missing. Uh, when there's a current, uh, it's very important to maintain your position and it's actually my favorite uh, condition to surf uh, on a bigger board because uh, I don't have to paddle that hard and uh, I always stay in the same spot. Uh, so uh, while these guys were chilling and uh, got Uber off the peak with the current, I kept maintaining my position and when the wave came in, I was in the right spot to catch the wave. So the key is to stay active and maintain your position whether there's a rip or hard offshore wind which usually pushes you out to the sea. Uh, when I don't want to hassle with the crowds, I move to the middle or maybe even further down and find the dreamers. This is one of the reasons I love to serve beach breaks as the sandbar shifts all the time, it gets really tricky, funky and it opens up many opportunities to find empty ways for yourself. Uh, so just to recap, I stay active through the whole session, take turns when I'm, when I'm part of the lineup or I move away from everyone and find empty waves. The water in the ocean is constantly moving due to wind, waves, tide and underwater currents which makes the waves break differently unless you surf Kelly Slater's wave pool. Here's another example of staying active. I sit on the inside and the wave is approaching. I see that the person at the peak is too far out, but if he or she was on the longboard and kept paddling for a wave, I would have to stop. 
uh, as they have a right of way otherwise it would be called snaking this is not good so never snake so I start moving more inside towards the shoulder to catch the wave if I didn't do anything I would likely end up with a closeout in case the waves are firing with uh, some random cleanup sets uh, and the lineup has over 20-30 people sitting on the inside is not a good idea at all and I only have one strategy in this case when the set approaches I usually let the first wave go even the second one and I let everyone go for it for uh, moving more inside then I take the third one which usually I have by myself with less stress sometimes there could be nothing uh, and it's actually kind of a gamble for me and it's so worth it and fun so guys uh, thanks for watching this episode if you enjoy it please subscribe and hit the like button and uh, also hit the notification bell uh, if you have any questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below also feel free to add me on instagram thank you for the support and your feedback i much appreciate it and until next time.